Welcome to The Profile. My name's Gary Dunn, and I'm here in the bowels of ProCopy. And thanks to ProCopy, we get the opportunity every week to talk to some of the more colourful Perth musicians and find out their journey, their stories, and their experiences. And tonight, um, on the couch, or on the chair, sorry Damien, I promised you a couch, as Mr Damien Ward from from V Capri, I it was the biggest band you were in, I think, and uh, mm. magnificent, uh, uh, colourful history you have there. But uh, uh, just welcome, mate. Thank you very much, Gary. Yeah. Nice to be here. N yeah. Nice of you to come in, and um, and my producer who's sitting over there. Uh, I'm looking for some stories uh, and a bit of dirt on him, if you can help me out <laughs> here. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. If, the, <laughs> if the walls could talk, yes. Uh, yeah. Look, I'll start with where were you born, Damien? Oh, I, I was born here in Perth. Yep. Uh, a month after my parents arrived uh, from East Africa. Wow. Uh, they're English yep. uh, and uh, they emigrated to Kenya. And I have five brothers and sisters that were born in either Kenya or uh, wow. um, Uganda. Yeah, and I was obviously conceived in one of those countries, but born a month after yep. they arrived here. Uh, yeah. And your siblings all here in Perth still? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, a couple of them passed away, but the ones that are, yep. are uh, alive are still here. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. And um, so, what instruments do you play apart from guitar? We all know you're yeah. a guitarist, but is it, are there other instruments? Um, I like to amuse myself on drums, but yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't play live. Uh, yeah. I do play a lot of bass guitar on uh, on the albums that I work on now yeah. as well. Yeah, uh, and you know I play with some soft synths and uh, you know drum programming as well. So. Yeah, well, being yeah. you're doing a lot of recording and you always have, so mm -hmm. I presume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would certainly uh, yeah. delve into those sort of things. We do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so in your life as a youngster, what was the turning point for you that you said, "Well, I'm going to be a musician. I'm going to do this. Oh, this is my passion." Yeah, it, it stuck with you. It was it was pretty early on in my life that I started, you know, learning guitar, and I'm pretty much self-taught. You know, yeah. I, my brother had some lessons, and I was, you know, only nine and standing outside the door listening to what was going on, and and then they'd disappear, and I'd sort of sneak in and grab one of those guitars, and yeah. I just could play. Yeah. And, and it was great. And just got a natural ear for yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think I'm a natural musician, but I had the desire to learn and, and, and you know sort of master what was going on yeah. there, and um, then I've always had a really deep interest also in the in the technical side of sound. And you know, at fourteen, I was uh, hanging around Purvisonic Sound. Yeah. And uh, Bob Purvis took me down to uh, the Entertainment Centre, yeah. where Peter Frampton was uh, playing, yeah. and Purvisonic were doing the sound. And uh, I wasn't you know involved really, but Bob said, uh, you know, at the end of Peter's sound check, do you want to get up on stage and sweep the stage? Mm. So, oh, hell wow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was up there with this Sweeper broom sweeping sweat the stage. Off. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and, and that's where I, I really, you know, saw my first Marshall mm. JCM 800s on double stacks, you yeah. know, three of them, and, and Peter's Leslie cabinets and, and you know, his voice box. Yeah. And, you know, it was really, you know, that, that pivotal moment where you just went, oh, wow, you know. I want to have this stuff. You yeah. Know? And, uh, you know, from that point on, it was, you know, my parents were always telling me, no, you've got to study this, you've got to study yeah. that. You can't be a musician. Well, what are you going to do when you're mm. too old? And this, that, and the other. I, was, I don't care. I just want to play. Yeah. And I did. You know, uh, that's what yeah. I did. I played, I had a band at school and, you know, I kept on uh, doing that all the way through my life and mm. kept on sneaking out to go and see bands as well, <laughs> you know. I'm supposed to be going to church, sorry mum, I never went to church, I was <laughs> at the Albion Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so after that band you were in, so mm. uh, I think The Flavours was probably the first band. <clears throat> yeah, the fir yeah. first band I ever really played in was a, was with a guy called Kirk Godfrey. Yeah. Uh, I used to work at Zenith and, yeah, and Kirk and I had a lot of fun and uh, you know we, we put a band together and it was sort of the Swanbourne Boys and we had this band called The Flavours. And, uh, mm. I think our first gig we ever did was in Manja or at you know, a private function. And it was really amusing for us because we didn't kind of, you know, it was a Greek family, yeah. uh, Anthea Canis, and uh, it was her 18th birthday. And, uh, you know, we did this sound check and, you know, sort of got some music and playing away and everything and had dinner. And we were there the night before and, 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 and the dad sort of marshaled us off into the laundry, you know, at the end of the night. And, 
then he locked and closed the door and we were all just stuck in the laundry and that was it we had to sleep on the floor in there because we weren't allowed anywhere else and wow. especially near his girls yeah, yeah that's <laughs> And judging by, no, I won't say anything. <laughs> um, okay, then uh, you were in The Perfect Strangers as well. Yeah, Before did, yeah. Michael Parks. Yeah, 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 I was, the other way. yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think I was the, the second guitar player, actually. Mm. So I um, uh, ended up doing sound for, uh, monitors for the riffs. Yeah. With uh, Barry Lytton and Michael Broadway Parks Tavern. And, uh, yeah, oh, Broadway, oh, big PAs, you know, lugging them in and out. Yeah. And, um, so I did sound for them, and and then the riffs, you know, fell apart. I loved the riffs. The, yeah, the riffs were great. Absolutely. You know, I, I used to go great and see thing. them all the time, and then I had this opportunity to work for them. I went, oh yeah, I'll do that. Mm. And uh, toured with them up and down the coast, and it was lots of fun. And Barry and Michael were, uh, you know, they were really outrageous characters in those days. Well, you and well, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I interviewed Michael the other week, and he was, he, you know, the, the amount of times they just shifted bands and yeah. joined this band, and this yeah. wouldn't last, and yeah. it was just all over. Well, they were with Jimmy and the boys, yeah, that's know, right. originally from uh, over in Melbourne, yeah. and they were totally outrageous band. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, no, Des, but, Des Joe's lost his shirt on that tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I think he lost yeah. it many times yeah, on those, yeah. with those guys, but. Uh, mm. Joylene was a, yeah. you know, a a high maintenance person. Yeah, <laughs> um, Parksy was probably the most maintenance in that band, but not. That's another story. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. I know you know you're overseas at the moment. Welcome yeah, I think he's in Prague. Or yeah, that's right. last I, I get his live posts on yeah. Facebook. He's very good with his uh, isn't channel he? work, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's quite cool. And so, Perfect Strangers, uh, you were a part of it on that mm, journey. Yeah, well, I was doing monitors for Strangers after, you know, the riffs broke up and mm. Barry formed um, Perfect Strangers. And, you know, I was working with Andrew Clayton Smith and, mm. and uh, you know, Andrew and uh, his uh, man, Phil Lear, they were yeah. exceptionally nice people. Yes. And, you know, I had a great time working with them. Yeah. And one day they were re rehearsing. Uh, I remember we were next door to Don Mariani's band, The Go Karts. And, yeah. You know, they they were in one room and the strangers were in yeah. another room, and we'd set up all their gear. And and George, their original guitar player, he he was uh, not the most reliable of people, and he didn't turn up to rehearsal. And the rest of the guys were all there, but his guitars were there, and mm. so I just picked one up and started playing all the Perfect Strangers songs, and they just kind of went, really, <laughs> and I went, yeah, and they went. Okay, you're, <laughs> you're in. in. <laughs> you're in. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, yeah, the other guy was. Out. Yeah, yeah. And I mean that, and that led me back to you know doing a huge show at the Red Parrot mm. you know, when the Riffs wanted to play again, but Glenn, their uh, original guitar player, he wasn't available for some reason. And I think I was only twenty mm. odd and incredibly drunk. And mm. my gosh, that was an amazing show at the Red Parrot. I, yeah. It's just huge and O'Hara coming down on a great big flying mm. fox and just wild, really mm. wild days, you know, yeah. lots of fun. Yeah. And so after that, that led into probably the most successful <laughs> band, yeah, would you say? Three, yeah, or? yeah, yeah. I mean, I played with Strangers for probably nearly 18 months yep. or so, you know, maybe pushing two years. And um, for one reason or another, we, we parted ways and I was being managed by Des Joyce, as nearly everybody in town was. Yep. And yeah. uh, I said to Des, uh, you see that band Harlequin Tears? Mm. He said, yeah, because he was managing them mm. as well. I said, if the bass player, the drummer and the keyboard player ever sort of, you know, split from mm. those guys, I'd really like to play with them. Des made it happen. Yeah. And a couple of months later, he said, you've got an audition with those three guys. Yeah. I went, you're kidding. I went down, played with the producer, <laughs> guy over there. Uh, and uh, and Michael O'Brien and Lance Karapetkov yeah. and uh, we just hit it off. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. And uh, they auditioned uh, Todd, I think, pretty much the yeah. same day. And uh, it was, you know, five guys who really bound very tightly yeah. together and and gelled really well together. We only rehearsed for seven days, but intensely for seven days, mm. and you know, went out and played our first gig. Which was huge, and it just kept on getting bigger mm. and bigger and bigger until you know there was no room to go, even with the biggest. Yeah. So yeah. that camaraderie between the five of you means that you're not going to give me any dirt on Timo. Or? Uh, we, we we can talk about some things off camera. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know all that stuff. I'm, I'm <laughs> oh no! This you know. Look, 
the, the camaraderie is very thick and yeah. you, you don't really want to, you know, you know, talk about yeah. things that, you know, what that, what went down in that hotel room stays in that hotel room. Yes. Okay. <laughs> no worries. You know. Well, I'll, I'll move on, okay? Do. <laughs> you, so, you finished with B. Capri? Uh, that you, you had an accident, I think, at some time or you... Yeah, I, um, I, I was into boats. Uh, yeah. I had a couple of ski boats uh, and, you know, B. Capri was very kind to me financially and uh, we had nice cars and lived in mm. nice places and I, I liked my boats. And um, <clears throat> I was with my friend uh, Eugene Dorsonia from Dorsonia Brothers and mm. we, we owned a boat together. And we went out in that one afternoon on a Friday before, you know, only a few hours before the gig. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I, I went out and got in the Range Rover and reversed it back down on the Lewin ramp, boat ramp. and got out of the Range Rover and, and just slipped over and bang, right. hit my head on the curve and uh, fractured my skull. Well, I knocked myself out completely and I was face down floating out into the river. And Eugene was circling around in the boat, you know, trying, you know, getting ready to bring it up on the trailer. But he just saw this happen and, and obviously he knew it wasn't good and he, he, he couldn't do anything, but he saw a couple of fishermen on the other side of the groin and yelled to them, oh, look, this guy drowning in the water, you know, and they came over and uh, dragged me out and that was sort of the first thing I can remember was just people tugging at the back of my shirt and mm. um, <clears throat> yeah I, I, I wasn't doing too well but uh, I managed to make it home and, yeah. uh, but I, I fell unconscious at home and obviously uh, got rushed to hospital and yeah the, the next thing I knew I was actually in uh, Charlie Gardner wow. and uh, I do remember seeing the boys actually yeah. <laughs> uh, vaguely, just opening my eyes for a minute and seeing, you know, all the guys in the band. And obviously, we weren't playing. Do uh, you think they were worried at that time about, you know, the money or the gigs missed? Or oh no, they, they were sincerely concerned about me. Yeah, yep. forget the money. <laughs> but no, I mean, the money was a huge driver in what we were doing, and, mm. and it always, uh, you know, I'm, it's, you know, music's great. It, it it's, has that capacity to, to deliver a, a lovely, you know, journey. Yeah. Um, but it also has that capacity to, you know, be a bit stupid sometimes. Yeah. And, and, and uh, for me, you know, I, I was very pig-headed. And, you know, I said, look, you know, after a week, uh, you know, and I fractured my skull from the front of my temple yeah. through the back of my head and I broke wow. my jaw through there. I perforated my eardrum. Had three cracked teeth, and you know, I, I was pretty messed up. And uh, but I was stubborn, and you know, I remember leaving the hospital and going home, and uh, I couldn't read, yeah. I couldn't write, uh, I couldn't drive a car, but I picked up a guitar, and it was all there. Well, wow. could play every That's every amazing. song that we learnt, everything, and just went, yeah. great, let's go and play. <laughs> <laughs> after uh, a week, after a week, yeah, wow. yeah, and you know, I mean, you mentioned money, but. No, with not, all respect, I, it's I, it's not sure. it's not so much the money. It's it's actually that buzz you get from being on stage. Yeah, and and the highs that we were having were huge highs, mm. and um, you know the money's always nice to come sure. along with it. Um, so I did. I, I got back on stage after pretty much a week, and uh, I got the roadies to get me a bottle of oxygen from CIG, and that was side of stage, and I was taking hits of that in between songs and. You know, I, I lasted for about three months, yeah. and my health caught up with me. Mm. You know, it was it was pretty ugly, and the boys could sense it. And, yeah, and I wasn't doing too well, and yeah. so you know, it was time for me to have a break from music, full stop. Yeah. And uh, that's when you know I, I left the band. I think it was about two and a half years mm. of us going in that band. Because you guys had like few hit singles didn't you number ones or you yeah yeah i mean uh yeah we did um yeah uh well we uh, had uh five singles that uh went really well in the charts I yeah think, you know most of them probably got to number one i know yeah. several of them did yeah uh and you know we had an album uh, as mm. well um uh, so how did the guys handle that the, the fact that they knew you were obviously uh, struggling. Mm, mm, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I remember it being in Planet Studios and, you know, we had uh, Kevin Beamish from, uh, mm. you know, well, he was a producer guy and yeah. he helped write a couple of songs, I think, and uh, he, some of his claim to fame was being working with uh, Jefferson Starship. Yeah, absolutely. Um, American, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's American. Uh, possibly Canadian, I'm not sure. American or Canadian? One or the other. 
don't know. He, he doesn't know. Tap, but you, you from over, over that, from over that hello, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, maybe you could tell the story. Yeah. For <laughs> well, don't forget, I, I sort of had a lot of amnesia. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, but you but did a lot of work at Planet anyway with John Villani, didn't you? Or I did in the end, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so Is that what that led to? Sorry to... Uh, well, okay. as I mentioned, you know, I was often really intrigued by the technical side of mm. what we did. And, you know, even with, during the V Capri, I, I was always, you know, really close to the road crew yeah. and, and Ben Galatza out the front. And, you know, we had a wonderful stereo PA and I was yeah. running Rockman You didn't Rockman have a quad? Processes. You didn't have a quad? Quad, no. Ice we left that to Ice Tiger, yeah. you know. They, they took that mantle, yeah. but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, the, the the whole stereo thing was really good, and you know, uh, I I used to play a, a Marshall, and that was mono, and then you know Brian Cannon yeah. from Pseudo Echo and I went on to uh, the Rockman processors. Yeah. I used those for a really long time yeah, you know, right. because of the beautiful lush stereo sound yeah. that produced it. Yeah, and, and I think that was you know some of the attraction to the yeah. sound that we had, and Lance's keyboards were all stereo as yeah. well, so it was a really big sound, yeah. you know, compared to the mono narrow sound yeah. that you know. Mate, we had the we were quite used. We were to. pulling twelve hundred people with the mono narrow sound. We yeah, never true. got the luxury <laughs> of stereo or quad. Um, well, you're all better looking than us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, mate. So. Um, Going on in the recording studio with John Bellamy, yeah, yeah, what was that yeah. experience like and what did you learn there? And I mean, John is a legend. And, you know. He is, and, and uh, it's uh, sad that he's not with us anymore. Yeah. But uh, yeah, look, I, I just had this desire to learn how to record. Yeah. And I knew that Planet was the best place for me to be. Yeah. And John, at first, uh, I think he was quite annoyed that I just kept on turning up at the doorstep every, you know, at 10 o'clock every morning. Said, what are you doing here? Oh, well, I'm just going to turn up every day until you taste me something. Yeah, yeah. And eventually, you know, got I, you I, got in, I got into yeah. the inner sanctum. Cool. And, uh, uh, you know, I used to hang around that SSL desk there. And, you know, and, and Les Williams was a wonderful guy to work mm. with as well. Uh, and, you know, eventually the studio got bought out uh, by a Japanese guy called Sato Hatana. That's right. And he was a really good boss. Yeah. He gave us lots of rope and, uh, you know, bought some really nice Japanese artists over. Cool. Justy Nasty, and I was their guitar mm. technician and yeah. assistant engineer on that album. And I worked on Dave Hull's album, Steel and Steel, and that was great fun as well. You know. Yeah, Dave he mentioned that uh, it was one of his favourites mm. that he recorded there. Yeah, yeah, very nice album. Yeah. Um, and, and John... You know, he's such a person of finesse, mm. uh, it, you know, and, and I learnt patience and I learnt, you know, to listen to sound a very different way. Yeah. And, um, and so I learnt the recording craft and, and at the same time I was going, you know, listening and, and going, I, I wouldn't mind doing some live sound and, and you know, Villani sort of helped me with that as well. And, you know, I, I went to some of the, the gigs at the church, at the Potter's House, yeah. and, you know, let him talk me through what he was doing. And, and you know, live sound translates really well from the studio as well. And mm. so, um, yeah, I started doing a lot of live sound. And mm. I did uh, front of house for a band, wonderful three-piece uh, music band called Storytime, a yeah. surf rock band. Yeah, and fantastic. I, I did their front of house for about three years. Yep. and toured with them and you know wonderful days and you know Ben Free show on guitar yeah. so you just gave up a bit of being on stage oh yeah doing yeah. another passion obviously all about sound and I think um having a guitar player out the front mixing yeah is really different yes um because it becomes a really musical mix and, yeah. and I'm a very hands-on mixer I yeah. really like I really like my effects uh, I like mm. you know my stereo delays and ping-pong it and, yeah you know, so uh, yeah, it was good, and, mm. and you know, I ended up buying a, a, a piece of kit from London called Function One. Yeah, uh, and uh, installed that to the Paddington Ale House, mm. uh, and we did really well there. You know, mm. um, I, I started speakers off. Function One. Function yeah, One, yeah, yeah, yeah Function yeah. One uh, yeah. speakers. They would like. DJ or mm. at the time were they or more so or not? Uh, well, they they've got a lot of DJ essence to them now, but still they're a massive live sound. Yeah, you know they've, they've just released their new um, series of uh, line array, which they've sort of tried to shy, shy away with for a long time. But would uh, you like to give them a plug? Or? Oh, fun, well, you know, <laughs> John Newsham and Tony Andrews, they're they're good mates. Yeah, cool, I've, I've, excellent. I've visited the factory. I've you know, had dinner with them, and I know them well. Uh, one day I hope to own another Function One system. Yep. You know, I think that'll be good fun. Uh, really enjoy that. Yeah. 
they're like driving a Formula One car. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know how to drive it, yeah. you can crash it, and the yeah. sound sounds bad, you know. Mm. But if you know how to drive them, they're the best. They're really you gorgeous. played Strats. More, yeah, more so, a lot of time. Yeah, actually yeah. in Vika Pre, I had these Kramers. I mean, yeah, they were sort right. of a Strat configuration, yeah. but uh, they were Kramer. Um, Not the headless one. Oh yeah, that was. Uh, I forget what brand that was. Mm. It was sort of like a, a, a Steinberg copy. Mm. Oh, right, it wasn't. It was a Riverhead. Riverhead. Yeah, that's Riverhead. what it was. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I only bought that. Uh, I think two days before we went and played our first gig, and yeah. thought this is a wild guitar to go and play on your first gig. <laughs> 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 and bought that out. Yeah. And it was. It was a very cool guitar. Uh, Talking about guitars, Damien, we've mm. got um, we've got, got this here. little ripper here, mm. and uh, we get all our guests to to sign it. Would you mind signing it? Sure. And. Um, we're running a little We're competition coming up, guests. Back or front? Um, wherever you want to put your mark. Um, we have a competition coming up soon. Um, we're going to ask you a, a question of, of something in one of our episodes. And um, maybe three questions, I've just been told. But uh, one, two or three questions. And uh, hopefully you can walk away with this, which will be certainly... <sighs> it, certainly the one of a kind, isn't it? You know? It is, yeah. yeah. Well, that's going to be great. I mean, you've got lots of... History yeah. on that. Yeah, we've even got, we've got uh, Lindsay and yeah, Lindsay Wells, and we've got Dave Hull. Yeah. And oh, there's Dave, got, I can see that. Yeah. Who's that? Pete. Pete. Uh, oh. Oh, it's Pete Busher. Yeah. Oh, my God. One of the greatest. Never, never. What a singers. great band that is. Yeah, so I used to go absolutely. and see them all the time. Yeah. And, you know, and Just speaking of that era, yeah. uh, well, they were a little bit later, but, you know, I, I mentioned the I used to go and see the riffs. Yeah. But one of the bands I used to love so much and influenced me massively was Jim Fisher and the Outlaws. Oh, great, yeah, you know, um, absolutely. And, you know, <laughs> they influenced me so much, I used to lie to my parents, because I wanted to go and see them. <laughs> Get yourself in trouble again. And I did, I used to go and see them, you know, quite yep. religiously every Sunday or, or wherever they were playing, you know. I mean, they were at the Swanbourne yep. for a long time. And that was great, great gig. So really can good. you give us an insight into why your nickname is Virgil? Virgil, you know, that came about because when I play guitar, I tend to nod my head a lot, mm. and it hurts my neck when I do it now. I try not to do it, but yeah, it's like the Thunderbird puppet. Oh, Virgil from the Thunderbirds. And, uh, yeah, so they're one of Alan Simpson's sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, things. Yeah. I, yeah. Look, I, I've I've actually watched a couple of these shows, and I've, I've heard people say that their favourite TV show is F Troop. So yeah, that had a big part of my life, F Troop, but actually... Not the Thunderbirds? Thunderbirds. No. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I still like watching it now. Oh, so that's maybe Gee, why put you... Put a Thunderbird rerun on and I'll watch it. So that's maybe why you do that yeah, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. I think I might have had some Thunderbird models or something as well. <laughs> sort of stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what was the first album you bought? What, what, what was your real influence as a musician? Yeah, it's funny, you know. I mean, I don't play a lot of them these days, but the first album that I really had was uh, uh, Sweet Baby James by James oh. Taylor. Mm. Uh, I, I bought a cassette and yeah. uh, my parents... Uh, uh, cassette? This, what are they? Uh, yeah, bought me this cassette deck and I could play stuff. And uh, I got a hammer that cassette deck yeah. for years. But yeah, that was the first album I actually had and yeah. uh, I really enjoyed that a lot. And I mentioned Eugene, and uh, yeah. Eugene and I used to listen to a lot of music, and uh, yeah. we went to a lot of concerts together. And yeah. you know, I think the first concert that I went to was, was with Eugene. Uh, it was uh, David Bowie's Thin White wow. Duke tour, yeah. and that massive, yeah, massively instrumental for me. Listening mm. to Carlos Alamor play there, yeah. it was just gigantic. Eighty three or yeah, it was even maybe like earlier than that. Yeah. I think you know, probably you know, eighty and yeah. or seventy nine. But it was. Uh, a real eye opener for me, mm. you know, watching that, you know, and and other people that I saw were Boss Gags. Mm. Uh, he was great, and uh, you know, uh, I saw Stevie Ray Vaughan play, uh, you know, and oh, same, just amazing, just unbelievable. I just saw Chris Rea play as well, yeah. and and he had a, a Geordie. Mm, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He's, a, he's really cool. Yeah. Mark Knopfler, Brian Johnson, oh, stop yeah, well, there. Well, they, they'd they'd bring them out. Well, there's people coming there, yeah. Uh, yeah. But Chris uh, had an influence on me again because he, uh, I was playing a Music Man RD100 and mm. he had two. Mm. Well, what are you doing with two? <laughs> but he used a, a Roland SBX uh, Splitter. 90 yeah, yeah. and he was running his guitar through yeah. that. 
bring it out in stereo. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of brought that whole stereo vibe back to yeah, me. And, yeah. and, and I was going, oh, I've got to have that sound. I've yeah. just got to work out how to do that. And that's when I went away from mono and found the Rockman process mm. and, and used that a lot. I had a Marshall, one of those Marshall MP1s with the, uh, a great uh, even tied, um, oh, you know, yeah. I had a rack yeah. and I had it in stereo, two, yeah. two boxes either side, but everything was mono. So anyway. <laughs> Um, who were you listening to on your way here in the car? Any music? The GPS system, oh. trying to get me here. Okay. Yeah, no, in between. Uh, actually, I, 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 like, I listen to a lot of uh, news radio. Yeah. Uh, I like current affairs. And, yeah. uh, but uh, I did have one of my albums on the stereo a couple of days ago, and I hadn't listened to it in the car before, and it was quite mm. eye-opening, actually. But <laughs> And that's what you've been doing, isn't it, for yeah. quite some time, working on some yeah. new albums. Yeah. Obviously, your experience yeah. at studios and... Yeah. And playing different instruments yeah. and the like, yeah? Yeah, I, I, I've had the good fortune of uh, having a long friendship with a guy called Scott Wade. Yeah. And uh, Scott and I uh, have uh, always you know, had a, a musical connection and, and Scott just recorded a lot of stuff that was just me messing around on guitars when I was younger. I just, just grabbed it and said, hey, yeah, it this? Yeah, having lunch yeah, yeah. and playing guitar and he just was yeah. bright enough to go, well, let's put a cassette in the deck and <laughs> put it on record while you're doing All that. the best songs happen that and, way, don't they? Yeah, and that's where a lot of our material came from. And, yeah. and it, you know, it's, uh, and, then, and then we've written a lot of new material as well. So have you got any uh, release dates or well, something no, coming out? We've, soon, well, we've, we've released two albums already and, and you know, one's under the, the band name of Boku. Where can, where can uh, our viewers buy that or, or oh, access go, that? That's, uh, uh, I mean, you can buy that on iTunes or uh, Amazon. Yep. Okay. Um, and you can listen to it all on uh, SoundCloud, but uh, we yep. uh, call ourselves Kinky Dub. Kinky now, Dub. So. Yeah, so you search Kinky Dove on SoundCloud and you'll find us and there's, you know, 60 odd tracks up there now. I'll go and have a listen. And uh, we released an so Boku released an album in uh, 2013 and then uh, Kinky Dove released Volume 1 yeah. in 2014. Uh, and we've had some really nice uh, journeys with yeah. some special people. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Boku's album Red Dress On was mixed by Phil yeah. Brown. Okay. Uh, and Phil Brown is... <laughs> He's a legend, you know. Yeah. His first album that he mixed was uh, Bob Marley's "I Shot mm. the Sheriff," yeah. And uh, he's got a brilliant book called "Are We Still Rolling?" Mm. And you know, the thing that we you know learn about from Phil was just make sure you have a tape running all the time yeah. whenever you're doing anything, yeah, you know. That's right. All of those wonderful little trills and just little ideas that just, just come out of your fingers, yeah, you know. Right. And they're, they're lost forever if you lost. don't record them. You know, so we we worked with him on that album, and that was really yeah. a lot of fun. And I went to England and helped yeah. produce that. Uh, Scott and I recorded it ourselves uh, with Logic, and uh, Scott's got a really nice studio at his house yeah. in London. And I run Logic over here, so we swap files yeah. and projects. It's and easy to do now, isn't it? With cool. technology. Yeah. And then with uh, Kinky Dub Volume One, we actually mix that ourselves. Mm. Uh, but we had a little bit of help from another really nice guy, Chris Kimsey. Mm. Uh, and uh, that was a an, an in very interesting connection. Chris Kimsey um, is very well known for producing some of the Rolling Stones' best albums, you right. know, Black and Black, yeah. and uh, some of that. But the album that he mixed that was the most interesting for me was he actually was the the engineer for um, Peter Frampton's uh, um, uh, Frampton, Frampton Comes Alive. Which the, takes the, you the, the back. The double live album. Takes you which back takes you straight sweeping back the to when I was sweeping the floor for Peter. <laughs> and I'm, you know, later on in life working with the guy who actually mixed that album. It's amazing, you know? isn't it? So it was a, a really nice connection. Mm. And uh, Chris is a lovely guy. And, yeah. He helped us. Uh, we did a little tour uh, in in Eng England, and uh, Chris became our sort of uh, uh, producer for that live tour. Cool. And helped us manage the sound and manage the people that we were working with. Mm -hmm. And we've got some wonderful artists that we work with. Uh, our drummer is a guy called Adam Faulkner. Yeah, uh, he's just amazing. Yeah, uh, and uh, Suleen Fleming, she does our our, our girl vocal. Yeah. And Steve Davis, who plays bass for us, bass with us. Uh, he's a guy from, he's an English guy, but he lives in France, and uh, that's uh, you know, we have a lot of fun with yeah, it. Cool. Yeah, cool, excellent. Yeah. So, what would your favourite band be of all time, Damien? Uh, favourite band of all time is, uh, or oh, these days it's, you know, it's so 
it's not fair to ask a musician for one band. But well, I love the Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters? Yeah. Right, and I love, I love rock. Yeah. You know, I, I do like rock. Yeah. And Foo Fighters really grew my bacon. So if you were de um, stranded on a deserted island, what would be the favourite album that you would take with you to listen to? Well, if I was going to know that I was going to be stranded on a desert island, I would say I'd go and take an album that I don't know so well mm. so I could learn it. Ah, and play interesting. It and, you know, develop that sound that came off that album. And uh, I have a very eclectic taste. Um, and I thought about this and I'd probably take some Dido away with me or some Faithless. Wow. Or some Faithless. Something, Dido. You know, something yeah. from that genre and era. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the first one I've, I've heard. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Oh, the, she's got some amazing yep. material. And um, so uh, <clears throat> what was the best Perth band you saw live? Oh, I I think the the Outlaws, Jim Fisher and the Outlaws. Okay. You know, I, I I'm I'm hard pressed to find a better yeah. band than you know the craftsmanship in that. You know, Jim's an amazing acoustic guitar player. Ian Simpson, the banjo player, is just yeah. you know he's an absolute yeah. legend now. And you know, and listening to him play when he was only you know 21, mm. 22, 23, it, it's just amazing yeah. the energy that came off that band. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what does the future hold for you? Ah, uh, well. Uh, more albums. Mm -hmm. Scott and I record every Christmas. Yeah. Uh, he comes back to Perth so, for a couple of months and Great. yeah. So uh, he was here last week actually, yeah. and we got together. For, cool. Uh, got some ideas down for what we're going to do yeah. this this uh, this mm -hmm. summer, uh, and that's always really good fun. You know, we have a ball. Yeah. Uh, so more albums, uh, more study. Yeah. Not studying. Yeah. Not sure what. Uh, my partners are. Remedial massage therapist. Well, uh, we, we've got a couple of businesses, and I help manage those and run those. And uh, mm. we're thinking. Well, she's she's thinking about doing acupuncture, and I might tag along on the back because well, I, I like medicine and I, I enjoy that. I'd be interested yeah. to meet her, but yeah, yeah, she's uh, quite. A, she's interesting. She's from Hong Kong and been here for five years. Oh, now. cool. Yeah. yeah. And any unfulfilled ambitions? Hmm. Well. Uh, not really. I mean, most of my ambitions I've sort of been able to realise and, and do. Um, I don't really have any regrets or any, you know, sort of uh, sorrows or anything like that, unfulfilled ambitions. You know, the only thing I could think about was when I was at school, I used to say I'd like to be a marine biologist. Mm, yeah. And I do get fascinated by, you know, documentaries on marine yeah. life and, and stuff like that. But these days, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I'd... Uh, have the stamina to go to uni mm. and do marine biology, yeah. but I, I take a while. Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't really see the the end, end game on that. But acupuncture, I, yeah. I'd really enjoy that. Cool. And uh, I've worked with a couple of acupuncturists uh, that we employ, and, and it's a very interesting field. Really, you know, really uh, uh, clever. Yeah. Mm. Chinese medicine's cool. Yeah. One letter, two words. Bika Pre reunion. Does that ring a bell for you? Or? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, there's a bell there. Uh, yeah, look, um, I'm always open to playing with Vicky Pre. Yeah. As I mentioned, you know, the, the camaraderie and the fun, it, it seems like when you put us all in the same room, there's, there's just so much history and, yeah. and so much uh, that, you know, sort of buzzes when we're all together. You know, I'm always up for it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, should I let Al know that? Oh, or some of the other guys? Or, or you're welcome yeah. to, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, do you collect anything, Damien? Um, well, the th not, not by design, but just uh, after noticing my habits, I collect watches. All right. I've got about 30 watches. and okay. I know other people have probably got a lot of watches as well, but yeah, I just like catching, you know, the sort of eye catching or whatever, and I catch watches. And, this particular watch is actually from uh, an Indian guru. Okay. And, uh, Can we zoom in on that watch, uh, yeah. Mr. Strong? He's, he's a very cool guy okay. I met in Thailand, and uh, I was wearing uh, just a, a, a pretty run-of-the-mill surf, uh, surf yeah. watch, you know, a rip curl watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he said, wanted to swap. Yeah, he said, "Can you take your watch off?" And I saw it. And I went, oh, "Hang on a second, why?" And I took my watch off, and then. He gave me his watch, and this is his watch. Wow. I've had that on for about six or seven years That's now. a beauty. And his name was Ratan Singh, and I spent, you know, several days with Ratan, and uh, mm. 
he's a lovely, lovely man, and he gave me my mantra. And wow. You know, really calmed me down. I, I, I studied. So I studied Buddhism. Meditation. Yeah, yeah. You know, transcendental. I did. I did that myself, but yeah. I know that's a bit different. But well, uh, I think all meditation get a can lead you to that transcendental state. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's a matter of your, the deepness that you can wow. get yourself to that level. And I remember Des was very much into Des Joyce. He used to, you know, we used to talk about Des being able to astral travel. Well, Des actually got, I was in a band called Hooker. Yeah. And yeah. he suggested that all of us get a life. Yeah. Because we argued so much and go to this place where we did, this is where I did, started transcendental meditation yeah. there and yeah. got a mantra and yeah. calmed us all down. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, you know, one of the things in my life that's been, you know, pretty, well, it's, you know, it's, it relates back to the accident. You know, when you get a brain injury, it's, it's been, uh, it does sort of mess with your personality a little sure. bit. Sure. Uh, and, you know, I used to have a very happy go lucky sort of nature before that accident. And it was still there, but I noticed as life sort of progressed that, you know, I was uh, probably not as happy as I, you know, wanted to be or, mm. or thought I should be. And, yeah. Uh, uh, at about 35, I, I discovered Buddhism, and you know, I think Richard cool. Gere was very heavily into it, and yeah. you know, it sparked my interest. And I, think I came from a, a heavily Catholic background, yeah. but never latched, latched onto it, never really understood it, didn't really mm. feel connected to it. And Buddhism was the one thing that you were really actually uh, I could gravitate towards, and, yeah. and felt comfortable doing, and, uh, mm. and and ended up, you know, quite deeply involved in it. Yeah. I think it's one of the most passive religions, obviously, and we're not going to talk politically about religions here mm, because mm. we might upset some people, but yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. It's, um, mm. it's a very easy way. And, uh, there's no sin. Yeah, and there's you know, you know, no possessions no, and, no. and all that sort of stuff. You yeah, know. It's, up, it's up to you, you know, yeah. and uh, how, how, how developed you want mm. to be. Yeah. But uh, you mentioned it as a, as a religion, and you know, a lot of people do see it as that, but you know, it's pure essence is, I, is I, not is not a no, religion at it's all. Nothing it's to do it's with a philosophy. It. No, no, I yeah, mentioned that because life. that's the way yeah. people look at yeah. it. Yeah. Definitely, so. yeah. Um okay, what would you put on your gravestone? Oh, uh, he led a full, colourful and joyous life. Good. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. yeah. Most people say Spike yeah. Milligan but that, that's great. <laughs> and um okay, one thing, if you could tell us just one thing that nobody knows about you, we we don't know. Um, oh. Is there something that you can dig out of that treasure chest um, oh, um, that could let us? You know? oh, look, I'd, I'm, I've been a pretty open book yeah. pretty much most of my life. Though. Yeah. I, I don't hold things back. Uh, Producer's telling me something about Bali, but oh. Oh, you know, like uh, he's <laughs> like he's doing this well, funny movement, like well, uh, you know, like I can't even. He do obviously that. knows that. Do that it's on not this the one show. thing that no one knows. <laughs> then is it? <laughs> well, that, no, you're right. So let's go back one step again. Then. Sorry, <laughs> he, he obviously knows. So it's not the one thing someone not, doesn't know. Oh, it makes me do things. Uh, like the one thing someone there. doesn't know. Oh, uh, I do like to wear makeup occasionally. Okay, there we go. Yeah, bit of makeup, bit of eyeliner. Yeah, so does Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We both get into that. Anything, any synergy there in the past, or is that no, too brave really. of a question? Was, or well, no, nah, it's, no. it's just a, a flipping answer. Really. Oh, okay, but I don't think there's a, a lot. You just have fun unknown. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Bit of fun. Yeah. And look, uh, obviously, I've been doing the Pub Legend show with uh, with Al yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. our producer and um, makeup artist. Um, <laughs> Wardrobe lady <laughs> didn't bring any food tonight. Oh we yeah, no, to do my yeah, collar. Yeah. Just being really, really hard to deal with. As, <laughs> as you've seen, isn't he? <laughs> you've seen it. Don't want to say too much to the viewers, but so has he done an interview? Not yet. No, oh. no. We're going to get him. We're going to get him on that yeah, chair one of these should. days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've got a funny feeling he'll be interviewing me. Yeah, yeah, I'll be trying to interview him, but yeah, yeah, he's so yeah. cheeky. And, can't uh, time down to one answer. Well, while I've got the opportunity, yep. I, you know, I, I thought about this, and I thought, you know, it's a it's a nice opportunity to say thank you to some people, and yeah, you know, sure. I'd really like to say thank you to you know Andrew Clayton Smith, who's not with us, and yep. and, and and I have spoken to Phil Lear in recent recent years because uh, Andrew and Phil were very kind to me and, yep. and provided me with a financial loan when I was only twenty one and wow. needed you know needed that JCM eight hundred to yes. make strangers work the way it did. So they uh, they pushed me along in that way, and they were very kind. And and, and Sharon Dawes as well, you know, from the Rock Exchange. Yeah. He, he was very kind to me as well. And 
you know, again, he, he provided some financial support where I needed it. Uh, and, and, you know, Des was just amazing all the time. Yeah. Uh, and made, made me and the bands and everyone a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, powerhouse. Um, you know, and uh, oh, hopefully, you know, Scott and Phil Brown and Chris Kimsey and those guys might see this one day. So I'd like to say thank oh, you to them because they've cool. been all really cool. And, and the people who support Kinky Dub and Boku, they're, they're you know, a special bunch of people as well. Uh, and, you know, thanks to all the guys in Vika Pre as well for yeah. that special years and pretty much everyone that I've played with and, you know, West of the Wall guys and Peter Harper and John Greenfield and uh, Duncan Taylor, you know, very good band, uh, very good musos. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you to everybody. And, you know, thank you to all the guys at Planet and thank you to Ainsley Grosser over at uh, the, the, the Upper Room, you know. Yeah. I, I managed that studio for several years. Uh, and, you know, Barry Drysdale at Music Park. And, you know, Wonderful champion, yeah, yeah, Barry. Yeah, yeah, very nice guy. Nice guys, you know, yeah. so. Rowan Hunter. Uh, Absolutely. Wonderful. Some person. of the other bands that I helped mix and produce would, would have been uh, J Babies. Uh, yeah. with them for a long time. Jez and yeah, yeah, all the boys. Jez yeah. And Glenn Hewitt. Mm. Yeah. So. Great yeah. guys. Yeah. Fantastic that you, yeah. that you appreciate everything that's uh, been an influence and helped you through yeah, your career. Yeah. And yeah. 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 So um, I'm amazed I can remember it. Hopefully uh, <laughs> Al, can, Al can coax you into maybe doing something with the Pub Legends and even maybe getting a mini V Capri um, uh, reunion of some type in there or something. I, I'm hearing whispers that maybe something might happen. So mm. all you V Capri fans out there, I'll appreciate that, I'm sure. So I'm up for it. Yep. Yeah, no worries. Look, uh, thanks, thanks for being on. Uh, really yeah. nice talking to you, Damien, mm. getting an in, insight into your life and your mm. career, and um, I hope everything really works out for you in your future and with the massage uh, uh, businesses and stuff. So, mm. And, um, you know, thanks, thanks very much for coming in. Pleasure. Always and nice to uh, see you guys and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and the boys here at Procopy. Yeah. yeah, and look, you know, while we're thanking people, I'd uh, like to thank Mark Whitehouse, uh, Procopy, mm. his endless hours of, of editing and and uh and doing what we're doing now uh, a, a gentleman a wonderful gentleman called phil strawn i call him Strachan to stir him up but but yeah he's a cameraman he sits and edits for hours and hours these guys don't get paid they're doing it for the love of the music industry and the, and the passion they have for the industry and of course i must thank um a fantastic gentleman very generous person mr alan simpson and um, hey. he's just he's just done a big yes because someone's actually given him praise. His name. But no, look, with all seriousness, um, you know, yeah. uh, Al is, is such a generous and, and helpful person for a lot of people, and yeah, we we really appreciate that. We, if you want to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, that would be wonderful. Um, you know, give us a thumbs up, and and you'll get an insight into when when our next episodes and what's coming up. And look, thank you for joining us and and putting up with me. And uh, good night. Thank you very much. See you later.
together. 